Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend God's Life. So God has a power that nothing else in the whole wide universe has. God can actually work good out of evil. See, I can take a mess and make a much bigger mess out of it. But God can do this crazy thing where he takes this whole dumpster fire of evil and he actually manages to work something good out of it. I mean, you see it no more clearly than in the crucifixion of our Lord, where he was mocked and, and slandered and spit upon and beaten and murdered for crimes that he did not commit. And from all of these sinful things, God produced salvation for you and for all of the world. God can work good out of evil. It's crazy. And so the first thing Christians tend to think then is, well, you know, if God can work good out of evil, well, bad must not be so bad. Or, or at least maybe sometimes God secretly wants me to do evil just so that he can work good. So it's probably fine that I'm doing this stuff. No. Let me repeat myself. No. Bad Christian. Those kind of thoughts, they, they lead us to, to treat the things that God would call wrong and dangerous with a certain kind of casualness that doesn't actually help anyone and in fact causes great harm both to you spiritually and sometimes even physically and also to your neighbor. In the large catechism, as Luther would teach us to pray, uh, lead us not into temptation, he writes, Therefore we Christians must be armed and daily expect to be incessantly attacked in order that no one may go on in security and heedlessly as though the devil were far from us, but all times expect and parry his blows. For though I am now chaste, patient, kind, and in firm faith, the devil will this very hour send such an arrow into my heart that I can scarcely stand, for he is an enemy that never desists nor becomes tired, so that when one temptation ceases, there always arise others and fresh ones. Accordingly, there is no help or comfort except to run hither and take hold of the Lord's prayer, and thus speak to God from the heart, Dear Father, thou hast bid me to pray, lead me not to relapse because of temptations. See, we don't have to cozy up to what God calls evil, but since we are so utterly surrounded by it that, that anybody actually paying attention to the law would be driven to utter despair and death, God would teach us to pray, lead us not into temptation. That even as we are tempted, all the more, God would work good out of all of these evils. He would drive us closer and closer to the comfort of the gospel. He would drive us closer and closer to the cross where Christ has bled and died for you and for all to cover the damage that sin would do, would do with, with his own death. That over and over again, God would take evil and work good for you. That doesn't make the evil good. It makes it died for. And so as we find shelter in the cross from all that is wrong with this world, God might even teach us something as we are being taught to pray, lead us not to temptation. Namely that, you know what? God doesn't actually need you to work good at all. He can get it done without you. He can even get it done in spite of you. And sometimes he will even work it through you. The joy is that sinners, when confronted with the devil and the world and our own sinful flesh, would be driven by the Holy Spirit all the more to pray, lead us not into temptation, to, to, to all the more take comfort in the cross where Jesus would bleed and die for you and for me so that we can keep good and evil in the categories which God has established. God didn't create evil. We did that. God doesn't want evil. But the thing is, if evil surrounds the people that he loves, he just won't let that stop him from doing good. It's not that evil is good. It's that God will dwell even in the midst of evil with us and for us to lead us out of temptation. That way we can call good good and evil evil, but take shelter from it in the God who has conquered it on the cross for sinners and for you. We can pray, lead us not into temptation, that although we are tempted by these things, we can fix our eyes on the victory which has already been won for us by Christ who is crucified.